What is going on guys? In today's video is the first installment of a little series I want to start doing which is ranking the top five favorite of a certain type of bait. And in today's video, if you didn't figure out by the title, is ranking one of the most used soft plastics in my opinion in all of bass fishing which is the stick bait. This has been used by beginners and pros alike and is caught thousands and thousands of fish over the years and I want to rank my top five favorite because this will help um, some beginners figure out some good brands and kind of help just get my opinion out there and I would like to see in the comments and by people who watch this what you think and what other um, stick baits are maybe better than what I rank. So disclaimer before this video starts, this is all my opinion. Uh, some people might not agree with the um, number one pick or the number five pick. It's up to me and this is the baits I fish with the most. And so that's why I rank these the way I am. So there's gonna be four points of critique for each bait that's going to determine why they're at uh, a certain point in the list of ranks. And the first is going to be price. Second is going to be accessibility, so how easy this is to find in stores. Third is durability. And fourth, and probably the most important, is the action. I have a fish tank in the other room. I fill with water, put the camera on, and show and compare the different actions of each brand of stick baits and show why I like one over the other. These are very versatile plastics. You can fish them in many different rigs. You got Texas rig, Carolina rig, wacky rig, uh, just weightless. Put them on a drop shot. You can put them on pretty much anything. You can use them as a trailer. You can find a bunch of ways. This is pretty much as long as it has a hook, you can use a stick bait. That goes for a lot of soft plastics. Stick baits are considered by a lot of people a beginner plastic, which is true. A lot of people start out fishing these. I know I did. My very first bass came off this same exact color, the same exact size, and on a Texas rig, which is pretty much the basics for a lot of people starting out bass fishing. A lot of people also think this is a small fish catcher only, which I've, true, I've caught a lot of small fish on a stick bait, but that five and a half I caught about a couple weeks ago was on the same color and this actually same exact brand. And I've also seen 10 inch fish take a five inch stick bait. So it just kind of depends on where you are and what the fish are feeling. You're gonna get bigger fish on probably different kind of setups, but they do catch big fish as well. So if the bite is tough, it's always a smart idea to pick up one of these, and I would like to give my opinion on the top five stick baits that you should pick up to help you catch more fish. With that being said, the five stick baits we are going to be going over today are as follows. One thing before we get started, please help me grow this channel. I'm trying to get to 500 by at least August and that was by the end of the year. And also I have an Instagram. Here's an Instagram right here. Please go follow it. I post pictures as much as I can. It's got quite a bit of pictures and it's fun to have two communities going. And if you haven't, give this video a like, comment what you liked about it, maybe what you want to see in the future, anything like that. Give me more ideas and also subscribe, hit that bell button so you get notifications when I upload because I'm trying to get this out more. With that being said, let's get started. Now that I've gone over the criteria of how I will be doing this ranking system and gone over the five stick baits I will be ranking, let's start with our number five spot and that is Big Bite Baits Stick Bait. So this stick bait right here is going to be the cheapest on the list. We are starting out with price. This bag right here, I see on sale at Dick's a lot in like kind of a bargain bin. This was $1.50 a pack. And 
most places they're like one to two bucks. So it's a pretty cheap pack of baits if you wanna go cheaper and not spend a lot of money on your plastics. So that right there is a pro. These are cheap and not too hard to find, which brings me to my next point of accessibility. I've found them at Cabela's and Dick's and Bass Pro, and that's about it. So far, that's the only place I've been able to find these guys. So I don't think if you do like these baits, you're gonna necessarily find them at your local tackle shop. Accessibility is all right. You can find them at bigger sporting retailers, but if you want them at your local tackle shop, you're probably not gonna find them as much as some of these other ones I'm gonna mention. Next, let's get into the durability of this guy. The durability of these worms are actually really good. It's more, it's rubbery. It's not as much of a dense plastic as some of these other baits. So it doesn't break as part as much. It's got some good stretch to it. And you can probably get a, quite a few hook sets before these things tear up. So that's what I like. It's, it's also, it's not as salt compacted as some of these other baits. There is some salt in there and there's some of their own scent. They have bite juice, which is their own marketed um, tractant, which I haven't noticed any increase in bites with that. But So the price and accessibility are all right. And the durability is really nice. It's more rubbery, like I said, so it can uh, withhold a few hook sets. But how does that translate to the action test? So we're gonna go in for our very first underwater shot in the fish tank. And I'm gonna show you why this is as high, to, as high as it is on the list and why it's not my favorite when it comes to action of a stick bait. All right, so welcome into the fancy test tank we have right here. I will be using this actually quite a bit in future top five ranking videos. I got the ice fishing pole right here with a hook and we're going every test is going to be wacky rig because I wanted to show how they uh, the action under the water when they're weightless I could have done a weightless Texas rig but I wanted to go as light as possible to kind of show some of the reasons I don't like the actions on a lot of these and also wacky rig is my favorite way to fish a stick bait so with that being said I'm gonna put this big Big bite bait, I can't get that name straight and show you a little underwater action. Time to drop it in and watch the initial sink test. So like I said about the durability of this, it is a very light plastic, it is not very dense. As you can see, the drop is super slow compared to some of these that we will go over, which is not a bad thing necessarily, especially if you're trying to do a slower presentation but you're not always gonna get to the depth you want if you're fishing deeper or kind of down in between some cover if you are fishing a wacky rig like under trees and stuff, which I like to skip them right under and let them float, sink to the bottom kind of quick. And this reason right here is why this is so high on my list for action. It's not breaking the water tension. So sometimes I've had this happen when I'm fishing this wacky rig See, it broke the water tension went down, but it's such a kind of light and not as dense plastic as some of these is I've had it where I've casted weightless and it's just set on the surface of the water and it's not heavy enough on the initial cast to break the water tension, which sucks when you're throwing out and you're not paying attention and you realize that your bait never sunk. So that's kind of a big flaw is this is a stick bait that you need to fish with some sort of weight or it's not gonna get down as far as you want it and it's not gonna always sink which is kind of a downside with the build quality is nice it's just not a plastic that is very dense it has no weight behind it so sometimes you need the weight just to be able to cast it and it's got a little bit of action on the way down but it's a pretty stiff worm altogether it's not very flexible and I think that's where the durability comes in. With that durability, it is sacrificing action, which is kind of a huge component when it comes to a soft plastic. You want some kind of motion. You can dead stick this and it probably works well, but it just doesn't flex or fall with a whole lot of movement. So even though this is number five on my list does not mean this is a bad stick bait at all. 
for the price you're getting a good durable stick bait but like I said the durability does cancel out some of the action which might not matter depending on what time of year you're fishing or where you're fishing. So if you wanna try out a new bait or if you wanna have something a little cheaper to start on, this is perfect. Go out and pick some of these up. Just keep in mind you might need to be fishing a Texas rig with a bullet weight or some kind of weighted rig because sometimes they don't like to break water tension. But like I said, slow fall, so you're not always gonna get as far down as you want or in the spot you want because it's a little lighter to cast. But Number five, big bite baits, picks them up. Now, that we're done with that, let's move on to number four. So number four pick is a company that I really, really love their crawls. It's one of the most unique companies out there and I love pretty much every product they have and I actually picked up a new product that they just released not too long ago. And that company and bait is the Biospawn Exo Stick. This is one of the most unique stick baits on the market in my opinion. This whole company in general, all their baits are really unique and weird designs, but I've fished these a ton. They have awesome craws, awesome, awesome drop shot baits, and they came out with the new Exo Swim, which I'm super excited, I just ordered some. So that should be in soon, and I will do a full review on those, of course. So let's get in, and I'm gonna show you what these look like, because they are pretty cool. So right here is the Exo Stick. As you can tell, it is a little different from your typical stick bait. These represent more of a earthworm, and I don't know what the hell these represent. They look more like a fish, in my opinion. And I just, I don't know, I love the design and the way Biospawn makes all their baits. They're really weird. They make them look kind of alien-ish, which really draws my attention. So let's get right into price and accessibility. These are going to be on the more expensive side of the stick bait selection I have. And this guy right here, this was, these are eight packs. And this ran about six bucks on their website and Cabela's on Tackle Warehouse, they're about 550. So it's a pack of eight for about five, six bucks. And the only three places I've been able to find is Biospawn website itself, Cabela's online and Tackle, Warehou Tackle Warehouse online. Some of the Cabela's actually uh, have these in stock, but the one in my town never has any Biospawn lures at all. And there's very few, uh, Cabela's sucks in general. They are very understocked on a lot of stuff they say they have in store. So I recommend if you're gonna buy these, kind of go all out, get a couple packs and buy them online and pay the shipping because otherwise it's gonna be kind of a hard time finding these. So let's get into the durability of this guy. So on the back, there's actually two types of these. There's the ExoStick Pro, which is this one. And there's the Exo Stick XD. Um, XT has better durability, and, but these pros have better action. They're, you can see, they're very loose. They're not a stiff plastic, which I really like. The sink rate on these is something I uh, look for a lot in stick baits. I want them to sink fast. Not too fast, but fast enough they're gonna get down where I want them. And these are a little heavier and have a better sink rate. Also something really cool, I don't know if you can see that, but since it's a darker, all these have their Biospawn logo on the baits, which is really cool. As durability, they have a nice stretch. They aren't going to rip up right away. And if they do, the cool thing is, if you can tell, they are segmented. So each of these pieces, there's, you can, it's kind of a perfect pinch point. So if you're fishing through the head and you kind of get ripped up right here, you go and pinch that piece off and you got a fresh new head of that worm to work at. So it's kind of cool, you can either shorten it or you can kind of get rid of the torn up pieces and kind of fish this until it's like kind of a nub or too short. And as it gets shorter, you can throw it on an eco rid, you can throw it on a drop shot. It's a very versatile bait, which is kind of different with these. Even their uh, craws and stuff, there's a lot of different things you can do. A lot of different rigging options. And the fact that you can modify it like that and just kind of tear it apart, kind of nice and precise like that. So it's flush, you kind of have a fresh new worm, is a big deal because that durability makes the price worth that you paid because you're getting more fishing time out of it and more fish in turn. All right, now that I kind of mutilated this one, let's take it to the tank and show the action. All right, underwater test of the Exo Stick 
by BioSpawn. Like I said, this has a faster fall rate, which is something I always look for. And something that I've noticed with doing this test right now is how much action on the way down this thing actually has. It being a denser and more flexible, it's just the water is going to move those ends more and give it more action on the way down. And it's not too light, so you can actually fish this weightless just perfectly. There's not a whole lot of cons to this. It's just not a bait that I've had a lot of progress with, I guess you could say. I've caught a few fish, but not as much as some of the other ones on this list. And there you go. That is the Biospawn Exostick, number four on this list. I should have made it a little lower, closer to number one, but the fact I didn't is my own personal luck with it. I haven't caught a lot of fish on it. I need to fish it more because it's an amazing bait that's very versatile and can do a lot. I know the underwater test probably from a camera view doesn't look like a whole lot, but it is very important. You want more action even when kind of subtle. And it's just important to me and I'm kind of showing you what they look like in general underwater because you can't always see when they're dropping down. So that's, it's just kind of an underwater visualization of what these baits look like. All right, now on to our number three spot. So this brand of stick bait, I think has a lot of discussion behind it of its ability to replace the Yamamoto Senko, which is talking big game because that is one of the top tier baits in all of bass fishing. And that, without any unknown introduction, I think is the Yum Dinger. A lot of people have said when I've asked, hey, what's a good substitute for like the Senko or a more expensive stick bait? They say, yum dinger. It's got great action and you can catch fish on them. And I agree, they are good stick baits. So let's get right into it, starting with price and accessibility. So I picked this up at Dick's because it was on my way home, but uh, it's like three bucks for a pack. So it is besides the um, big bite baits is the cheaper on the list and that's why a lot of people turn to these because they have great action and they're a good stick bait and they're very cheap and durable. So these stick baits right here are, just Yum in general is a very well-known bait company. I think you can find Yums in pretty much any tackle shop. I found them at my local ones, I found them at like Cabela's and Bass Pro and all those places. So accessibility and price is where these things are a huge pro because you could pretty much find them anywhere, kind of like a Senko. So these, they're good durable baits. They're just, they don't have a whole lot of stretch to them like the other ones, even though they're a lot lighter than those Exo Sticks. The Exo Sticks have a lot of stretch and these don't stretch very much at all, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but if you're getting bit on the end of, let's say you have a Texas rig and you're getting bit on the end, you want that to be able to stretch before that fish either takes it in whole or lets go of it. If they're biting it and pulling on it and they're ripping the tail off, you're gonna have to keep replacing it. So having a little bit of stretch and give is nice because you're not gonna be busting through baits because a lot of fish will short bite it and kind of nip the tails off, which is kind of what I mean by durability. Also, also the ability to fish multiple times and get multiple catches out of one lure so these things are good they do rip a little easily they aren't as durable in my opinion as the uh big bites or the exo stick but they you can still fish multiple times and catch quite a bit of fish on i've caught a lot when i don't have like my preferred senko or exo stick with me these guys come in handy and i've caught tons of fish on them so price and accessibility is a big pro durability is there, it's um, not as great as in not getting busted up as some of these, but and as you'll see by the end of the video, durability is not the sale of whether or not it's going to be my top pick for stick baits. So let's take this guy, get him in the water, and I'll kind of show you his action, and then we will get to our number two and number one. Let's go! Time to toss the yum dinger in check out the action and kind of talk about why I like it and the reason why it's not number two or number one. So we can drop her in, watch that fall rate, 
it is super slow and there you go right there i barely dropped it in and that's probably the number one reason this thing doesn't sit at my number two spot is it is light there's not a lot of density or salt content for that matter inside these baits it's almost worse than the big bite i just don't like the plastic quality of the big bites i think they're a little cheaply made that's why i like these more because i feel like there's a little more quality in these baits but they have a super slow fall and that's why i don't fish them as much as i would like to because they are cheaper as you can see when it drops it really doesn't move at all it's got a little bit of a back and forth but compared to a lot of these this thing has little to no action which is good for dead sticking because a nice slow subtle fall like that will get you bit on harder fishing days but even the up and down it just doesn't have a whole lot of flex to it it's a it is a stiff worm it is a very light worm so it's one of those that you kind of want to fish not weightless you would want to put some weight on it otherwise you might just be floating on the top sometimes and you can't really cast it too far without a little bit of assistance so right there is the reason this thing ranks a little higher than I would hope and why to me it is not a replacement for my number one and number two pick because of the action it has it's just not what I'm looking for and not what I want to fish and I know that because I haven't caught as many fish on this as I have on the next two all right so yum dinger fills our number three spot the discussion and kind of controversy between these and the Senko is kind of why it ranks a little higher because I think it does have a little wiggle room to get in there and be a replacement when you don't have the money to spend eight bucks on a pack of Senkos. Price and accessibility do play a big part of where this lies. Three bucks for a pack of 10 is not bad at all. And you can find them pretty much anywhere you go because it is a widely known brand and that's always helpful. It's gonna be even cheaper at a Walmart. If you're in a Walmart, grab some of these, save yourself some money, catch some fish. The durability is there. It might break, you might go through a few, but hey, you only spent three bucks. But that's the thing, the durability isn't the best and the action really isn't the best. It comes to a bias of a lot of people. It's gonna be your opinion. In my opinion, it's not the best action, but it's got a lot of pros to its cons and I still like it and I still fish it today and that's why I have a full pack. Now let's get to our number two and number one spot and then I will close out this video and hopefully this will help some people figure out what kind of soft plastics to pick up. All right, coming in at my number two pick is a stick bait that almost was my number one, but there's a few factors that put it a little bit behind my number one pick. This is a stick bait that I got in a mystery tackle box a few years ago. And once I went through them, I kind of didn't think about getting them again because I couldn't find them anywhere, and this video was a perfect time for me to stock back up on them. And that is Charlie's Worm salt bango i have not heard a lot about these stick baits pulled them out of my mystery tackle box and threw them around and i caught a lot of good fish um one of the first times i caught any fish at fern ridge and it was a video i made about a year and a half ago is i went through my last of these and they worked really well and i was surprised because i've never heard of them before but the fact that i've never heard of them before and i haven't got any since brings me to one of my first points of why this is my number two and not my one number one and that has to be accessibility i have never seen these anywhere in any store i've never heard of them because of that reason before i got mystery tackle box and is the reason i haven't picked them up since now i had to order them online from their website and it was just kind of it's kind of hard to find them it's a mostly a saltwater tackle store. Charlie's Worms is a saltwater tackle store in Florida. It's a big reason why this is number two, is accessibility. They are not easy to find. Not like a lot of these other baits like Yum Dingers or even the Biospawn. Biospawn is not like super widely known or like um, stocked in a bunch of stores, but you can still find the exo sticks around. These, however, are amazing but they're very hard to find. But when it becomes, but when it comes to build quality, the density and the plastic quality 
is quite there, which I'm surprised these are more popular because it's a very well put together saw plastic. I love it. It's not super brittle and it stretches nice and it, you can get a lot of catches in before you kind of have to replace them, which is a big part and a big pro for me because I don't like going through bags of plastics because it kind of racks up on cash. And the price, the price isn't terrible. It is about $3.50 a bag, but then you're ordering online, so uh, you have to factor in shipping, which makes it a little more expensive. I got these two bags for, I think, $14 altogether, which, if you think about it, if you're buying them at a store, $3.50 bag, it'd be a lot cheaper. And they might even be cheaper if they're at, like, Dick's or Cabela's. So, the two pros is the durability and we will get to the action, that's another pro. And the cons are kind of the price because of the shipping and accessibility because you have to order online, you can't find them anywhere else. But they're not widely known, sir. They're kind of the secret weapon and I really like them. And I kind of want to get this name out more. I have drop shot worms in these, in this brand and um, some other just kind of like trick worms. It's a very good brand and I want them to be widely known a little better not that like a small channel is going to really help, but that way more people start using them and maybe they'll be in stores so I can kind of ax the accessibility con and also the price con and they will slowly move up to my number one spot. So yeah, let's hit the test tank. I'll show you the action and we will get to my number one pick. All right, we are at the test tank with the Charlie's Worm Salt Bango. I'm going to give a little demonstration of what the action looks like in the water and kind of talk about it and why it's such a good plastic and almost my number one pick. So first of all, like I talked about density, we're going to drop this guy in right away and it's immediately going to start sinking. It's a slower fall rate than some others and it's good for skipping and pitching to cover if you have a Texas rig or even wacky rig but it does have a nice light action as it falls. So it's got just enough action to entice bass on a harder bite and it's got a nice flick to it as you work it. So just that light flutter you see is the action I like to see in my stick baits. So when it comes down to it, it's got a nice fall rate, nice action, and just an overall nice look which plants this guy at my number two pick. So my number one favorite stick bait, which is probably not a huge shock to a lot of people, would have to be, of course, the, the Yamamoto Senko. This is probably one of the most widely known baits and bait companies used for bass fishing. So much so that the word Senko, which is directly tied it to the Yamamoto stick bait brand because this is called a Yamamoto Senko is used to describe stick baits as a whole kind of. You could have any of the other stick baits that I've shown in this video. A lot of people are just gonna call those Senkos because it's just kind of a house word for stick baits because Yamamotos are so popular. And the reason is they produce, they produce a lot of fish. I mean, look at that, I only got one left and this pack is probably only a week old. So I'm gonna go into the few points of why I like these and why I don't. I'll take it out. I've done a lot of research, I've asked around trying to find a stick bait that reigns a little higher than the Yamamoto's or can fish equally as well and I have not been able to find one that produces fish the way this soft plastic does. A lot of people say yum dingers are a good substitute. Yum dingers are good. They just there's something about a Senko that a yum dinger just can't match. I don't know what secret formula they put in this, but this thing produces fish over any other stick bait I've ever fished. Charlie's worms was very close, but this just is the one I would go for every time. Even though the Senko is my number one choice, it isn't without its flaws. And one of the biggest ones and the reason a lot of people look for a substitute to the Yamamoto is 
a big one, which is price. So like I said, I'm almost out of that pack, which means I'm gonna have to restock. And when I'm not getting bit, I wanna throw a Sanko on to see if I can produce a few bites, but I'm gonna have to go buy a new pack. And price, when it comes to plastics, is kinda hard to spend, because you're throwing something that's gonna get ripped up. So when it comes down to it, you're spending about, with Sankos, cheapest I've found is about 650, and that's at Walmart. But if you go to other tackle shops, they can go from 650 to about 850, and that's expensive for something that, like I said, is going to get kind of torn up after a while, and you're going to have to replace. It's not like spending, let's say, $12 on a hard body plastic because, yeah, you're going to smack the thing against rocks, but you're not going to have to replace it like super soon. You might have to replace hooks and stuff, but it's not like soft plastic. And 850 is quite a bit for soft plastics compared to let's say the Big Bites, which is $1.50 a pack for 10. So when you're throwing these, you're about throwing a dollar a worm, and that's gonna kind of rack up after a while, especially if you're going through them quite a bit. With that being said, the accessibility of Senko is insane. You can go to a Cabela's, a Bass Pro, a local tackle shop, a Biomart, a Fred Myers, and a Walmart. And since it's such a widely used bait, it's going to be at every single tackle shop that has anything bass related. So that's where like the accessibility and price kind of butt heads because even though it's super expensive, if you need a good pro fish producing plastic, it's going to be anywhere you look pretty much. And one of the last pieces before I show the action of this amazing little soft plastic is I want to talk about another con which is the durability of this thing. These things are very brittle plastic and they're dense, which helps a lot to what I'm about to show, but that also makes them brittle, which when you're throwing something that's getting smacked by a fish or kind of pulled at the end, these, I don't know if you can see, but when I do that, it's already kind of ripping a little bit. Let's see if I can get it in focus. Yeah, so it's already kind of peeling. It's chopped full of salt, so a lot of that friction is gonna cut into that bait a lot. So the durability is also kind of where the price factor kind of go hand in hand, which sucks, is you go through these quite a bit, which is a genius marketing move on them. They make an amazing plastic that produces tons of fish that fall apart a bunch, and they are expensive as hell. So you're going out and buying more because you're catching fish on them, but they're busting up and ripping quick. You can catch two or three fish before these things are done, and then you're going through a pack really quick. Somehow they built an amazing body and plastic formula that makes the action and the fall rate and all that perfect, but to the point that you go through them fast, you're spending a lot of money. So that's my two kind of cons for the Senko, is durability is not as good as some of the stiffer and lighter plastics, and they're more expensive to buy because you're going through them more. And now we're going to hop in to the tank. I'm gonna show you why these reign supreme. All right, we are at the test tank, and I'm gonna show you the action on the Yamamoto Senko. This is a much more dense plastic than some of the other ones I went over, which is a big reason why I like it. It's perfect for skipping under trees and fishing weightless because the nice, heavy, dense body sinks quick so you aren't getting hung up in a lot and you're able to get down to the spots you need, especially wacky rig to get the bites you want. So I'm gonna pop it in the tank real quick. You can see that thing drops really quick. And if you watch as it falls, it's got a flutter and that action right there is one of the key things that I've noticed with Sankos that I really like but I like if you're just letting it drop that it's not just completely still it still has life to it and it's got that nice fast drop that density and salt content is perfect to get bit and just all those factors make it an all-around perfect soft plastic for beginners or just anyone who wants to fish and produce a bite. These are very versatile and you can take them anywhere. And Senkos are usually always in my pocket. And there's a big reason why I chose it as my number one. All right, number one pick is the Gary Yamamoto. I 
bet no one was really who knows stick baits or just plastics in general. We're really too surprised I was gonna pick that. There's a reason it's so popular and works so well is it just produces its durability, of course, is eh, and price is eh, but it's worth it because I've caught a lot of fish on it and it's kind of a game changer and a lifesaver when it comes to tournaments if you're not getting bit. I hope this video has helped newer people kind of figure out which stick baits and this beginner soft plastic to go to and there's a lot of options. Test them out. This is just my opinion. Try these ones out and see which ones you like more. And for people who fish a lot, hopefully there's some on here like the Charlie's Worms maybe you didn't hear of and something you want to try out. And it might replace your Senko and save you some money. So to just kind of recap on this whole video, we had our number five spot at Big Bite Baits. Uh, durability was good. Action was eh. Price was awesome. Accessibility was also eh. Next, we had the Biospawn Exostick. Very unique, very awesome company. Please give these guys a look. They need to be bigger. They have some awesome, awesome stuff. They are a pretty big company, but like, I wanna see more people using these lures because they are really cool, very unique, and I want, the more popular they get, the more they're gonna pump out different stuff, and I like what they do, and I wanna see more. Fall rate is awesome. Action is awesome. Price kinda sucks. Accessibility is kinda hard to find. And that's why it's number four. The supposed Senko replacer, the Yum Dinger, price is awesome. Accessibility is pretty much anywhere you look, you can find it. And durability is pretty good. It's a very light plastic, doesn't sink or have nearly enough action for me to place it higher than it is. But a lot of people swear by it, so that's why I put it higher, so some people can try it and kind of get an idea for themselves. Number two is a close, close call. This was almost number one. I freaking love these salt bangos. They are awesome, awesome. Got a mystery tackle box, but kind of forgot about them because you can't find them anywhere. And they're a little expensive because of shipping and uh, you only get an eight pack for like six bucks, five or six bucks. So that's why it is not number one because it is hard to find. If you want them, you gotta order them online. But they have awesome action, they have awesome fall rate, the build quality, or the plastic quality and durability is really great and I get bit. I went through a pack of these pretty quick, caught a lot of fish on them, almost as much as a Senko. So that's why they're number two. I definitely want more people fishing these so I can see these more and not have to wear them online all the time. But very good worm. And number one, of course, is the Yamamo Senko. As you can see, I went fishing yesterday, used my last one and it's gone. The durability of these things suck. They are very brittle, but they're loaded with salt, which I think kind of adds to the fact they're so brittle, but they get bit so often. But you go through them a lot. They're very expensive. I went to Dick's today, like I said in the video, and they were uh, $9 a pack for 10 but they produce so well. Senko, Senko, Senko. If you aren't sure on how to fish right away, pick up a pack of these, do a Texas rig, do a wacky rig, you will catch a bass. I guarantee it. They are a great starter. It's my very first bass came off of a green pumpkin Senko, and I have been fishing ever since because of that moment. So please give these a look because you will not regret it. There is a big reason why it's number one. Awesome action. Awesome lure. Thank you for watching. Really hope this video was enjoyable, not too boring. I know the water test wasn't amazing, but I had to do it because that's a big factor is the action of the lure because that's kind of what a lot of companies are going for is good action because good action gets you bit. Please subscribe, please comment, please like. Thank you very much. I hope to catch you and some fish in the next video. Peace out.